I have finished reviewing the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation investigative report into the shooting death of Andre Horton by the Memphis Police Department. In addition to my review of that complete report, the four senior prosecutors in this office who make up our officer involved shooting death review team have also reviewed the file. We have looked at the facts, we've looked at the evidence, and we have looked at the law of the state of Tennessee. It is my opinion and our concluding opinion that no criminal charges are warranted against the officer involved in this shooting. This is a brief video that will highlight some of the facts that were presented to us from the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, as well as a brief explanation of the legal analysis that we undertook. It is important to remember that our job is to look to the facts and the evidence and make a determination whether state criminal laws were violated. It is not my job to determine whether policies or procedures of the Memphis Police Department were broken. That is a job for the director. In addition to this video that we are posting on the website, you can view the complete Tennessee Bureau of Investigation file that was delivered to our office. If you take the time to look at that file, you will see that there is some information that has been blacked out, that has been redacted. We have to do that. Law requires that we remove identifying information before we make files available for public viewing. So that is why you will see those markings. On Thursday evening, December 13th, 2018, Memphis police received two separate 911 calls from motorists. Both said a pedestrian was in the middle of James Road near Homewood Drive, pointing a gun at them as they drove past. This is a map of James Road and Homewood in the Raleigh, North Memphis area. Several police, several police units were already in the area investigating an unrelated armed party call. It was raining that night and it was already very dark. Here's a photograph from that evening. The gunman was 42 year old Andre Horton. One motorist said that she had to change lanes to avoid hitting the gunman. My son said he has a gun, go, go, go. The man then bent over and pointed the gun at my car. The gun looked chrome and silver and it was a semi-automatic. It looked like a 45. If he fired a shot, I did not hear it because my son was yelling. Another motorist said I saw a gun in his right hand. The gun was a big semi-automatic. He was on my driver's side. I swerved to my left to miss him. I heard a pop on my windshield and I kept driving. The first officer on the scene said Horton was in the middle of James Road. By the time I saw him, this is a quote from the officer, he was 15 to 20 yards from me. Once he pointed the gun at me, I felt like I was a sitting duck and I threw my car in reverse. I got on the radio and I told the other officers he has a gun. Another officer arrived from the opposite direction on James Road. He said the gunman was in the middle of the street about 20 feet from him. Again, a quote from this officer, I shined my spotlight on him, I put my car in park, and as I was exiting, I noticed he had a handgun pointed at me. This officer was in a marked car, as was the other officer, and both of these officers were in uniform. I ordered him to drop the weapon, and then I shot my weapon until he fell to the ground. I was in fear of getting shot. This, what you just saw was body-worn camera video. This is a still shot from that officer's body-worn camera. Within that yellow circle is the weapon that Mr. Horton had. Horton was shot once in the chest and had grazing gunshot wounds to the abdomen and the neck. He was taken by ambulance to Regional 1 where he was pronounced dead at 10.48 p.m. Toxicology report showed a blood alcohol level of 0.042. He had no other drugs in his system. 
According to protocol outlined in a 2015 memorandum of understanding among myself, the sheriff, the police department, and the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, police director Rawlings called me when this incident occurred. I in turn notified the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation and requested that they conduct a complete and thorough and independent investigation of the facts leading up to and the death of Andre Horton. This is a photograph from the scene showing marked MPD cars. This is Mr. Horton's gun in the middle of the street along with a magazine. Another photograph of the weapon used by Mr. Horton. 911 callers described it looking like a 45 and a big semi-automatic. Legal analysis and conclusions of law. Again, it's important to remember that my job is not to determine if policies or procedures of the Memphis Police Department were broken by officers on the scene. That is a determination for the police department to make. My job is solely in these cases, and in all cases this office reviews, is to determine if the criminal laws of the state of Tennessee have been broken, and if so, by whom. Under Tennessee law, deadly force by a law enforcement officer is justified when the officer has probable cause to believe that the individual to be arrested, in this case, Mr. Horton, poses a threat of serious bodily injury, either to the officer or to other citizens, unless he is immediately apprehended. In this case, the suspect was in the middle of a street on a dark, rainy night, waving a handgun at passing motorists. One driver immediately accelerated to get away from Horton, while another said he had to swerve to avoid Horton, who jumped in front of his car with a pistol in his hand. Suspect Horton continued the threatening behavior when the police arrived, again in clearly marked patrol cars and in uniform. One officer had to put his patrol car in reverse when Horton walked toward him pointing the gun. Another officer said Horton advanced to some 20 feet while pointing the gun at him. The officer shouted, drop it now. Mr. Horton did not comply. The officer then fired in self-defense. We cannot know what the suspect had in mind that night because he gave the officers absolutely no time to find out. I find that the officer in this fatal shooting was lawfully justified and violated no criminal laws of the state of Tennessee. <laughs>